We're here at Sebring. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with Michael Percy out of Fort Walton Beach, who makes the very interesting, well, tell me what we're sitting in here, so that we've got the whole perspective on not just the close, but the whole uh, aircraft. Sure. We're sitting in a weight shift amphibious aircraft made by Airtime Aircraft. It's uh, long been known as the Signet. This rig with the Rotax 912S 100 horsepower weighs 700 pounds, depending on options. Um, this is with titanium landing gear, aluminum floats, uh, a wing manufactured for us by North Wing. Um, one of the big advantages of this aircraft is how easily it folds up to trailer to take it places. Um, yeah, there are people that would look at this and go, well, first of all, I don't get weight shift, so we'll come back to that in a bit, and how sure. that whole thing works and why it's so easy to fly. But some people would look at this and go, well, I don't know what I'd do with this. I see that it might fly great, but how do I transport it? You brought these down from your home base on a trailer driving down the highway, is that right? That's right. So people are going to think that's pretty unusual. Tell me about the transition time from here we are in a flyable aircraft. We could be on the water now if we had some water, right? And uh, and going from that to on a trailer ready to drive. How long are we talking? A couple hours? Oh no! <laughs> if the uh, about 20 minutes. And really? if, if the mosquitoes are biting and it's about <laughs> to rain, it can really be done speeding around like Energizer Bunny in about 10 minutes. Is if that right? Really after one person can get it done in, in 10, an experienced person like myself who's done it you know a bunch of times can get it done. Wow that's pretty remarkable yeah. actually. So 15-20 minutes for somebody not racing around. So 20 minutes you bring it up you bring your tree you bring it back to the beach you bring your trailer down the ramp you put this on the trailer you've got your own trailer right and then you can crank it up sure we make a custom trailer for it and so we, when you pull up in the parking lot at your boat ramp or beach roll it off the trailer and on dry ground here you open up the wing put in the ribs and uh, put the wing up in its flying position and then you're ready to pre-flight and taxi into the water. So you just drive down the boat ramp, across the beach, into the water, and ready to fly. That is a series of uh, ribs that go, just like wing ribs in a conventional airplane, except they're tubular, and they slide into pockets on the sail, and that whole process takes, I don't know, five minutes, ten minutes, like that? Yes, five minutes to open the wing and uh, put the ribs in. And then you've got a pretty slick system for, this is called a crossbar here, that holds the wings in their present position, That's and that right. slides forward and back so the whole wing can collapse into a big long tube basically. That's right. And that process is pretty straightforward from what you showed us. It's some uh, mechanism at the back of the wing, right? Yes. Yes, one thing to unclip. And the rest of it here is pretty much the way it is. You That's don't have right. to change much on the on the carriage it's typically called. That's correct. Okay. Yes, there's nothing else to be taken apart or put. You just, we make an instrument cover to keep the instruments protected from the elements when you're trailering around and um, that's it. Take off your carburetor covers or your engine cover, and that's it. Cool. So, okay. Now, that all has to do with this thing if it was just a land vehicle or on straight floats or something, but we've got more than that here. You've sure. got an amphibious aircraft here, land or water. Yes. And so, talk to me a little bit about the landing here. I've understood uh, from one of your compatriots, uh, Jordan Pyle, that you've, uh, Pyle, that you've uh, made some changes to how the landing gear is constructed so that it holds up better in difficult conditions like salt water, which is really tough. And you're at Fort Walton Beach, which is on the salt water, or near it. Yes. Uh, that's one of the toughest environments for any kind of water vehicle, right? Yes. So how do you handle an airplane in that condition? Yeah, we do all our flying from salt water, and people ask how they hold up in salt water, sure. and they hold up great in salt water, because we have, over the years, we've stripped off every bit of ferrous material that we can strip off. And they're easy to find because they turn orange in salt water. <laughs> So we've removed all that, replaced with titanium, stainless, and uh, powder-coated aluminum. So that's the construction. Um, yeah, I see a lot of stuff that looks like titanium, but which I believe is aluminum that's nicely finished to look that way, right? Right. But some elements, like the landing gear legs and so forth, those are actual titanium? The front and rear landing gear are completely titanium. Okay. Yes. Does that hold up in salt water as well as we've been led to believe? Titanium is amazing. It is less stainless than, or more stainless than stainless is. Yeah, I've seen so. stainless actually get some rust, despite what its name implies. So. Exactly. Titanium, never any corrosion, whether it's coated or not coated. It's a, a perfect material for salt water. 
except for the cost. But uh, yeah, so I was going to ask you about that. Titanium is not an inexpensive material, but you're not using huge amounts of it, so I suppose it's a tolerable. But and we, we stay away from doing too much price stuff on these videos because they can last a long time. So folks, don't take these prices to fact. Go to the factory, talk to Michael and his team about what it's actually going to cost you. But get us in the ballpark of low to high end. For, now we're talking an amphibious seaplane here, which in the GA world is breathtakingly expensive. And even in the LSA seaplane world, it could be some serious money. Get us in the ballpark here. What are we talking about to acquire one of these, Michael? Sure. Uh, decked out with the Rotax 912S, 100 horsepower. This machine uh, is uh, 57,600. So just under 60,000 um, with um, standard engine, standard instruments. Yeah, um, that's, and that's a that's a big engine and a four-stroke big engine. Yes, yes. With the 65 horse two-stroke engine. We get the price down to under forty thousand dollars for one. For an amphibious, still. For an amphibious, just like this, but with the smaller engine and with standard instruments. I think by any benchmark, and uh, we're now in 2015. We don't normally do dates either, but we got to keep this in perspective. Those prices at this time—that's that's an amazing number, and that's a ready-to-fly aircraft. Yes. So yep, let's talk about flight. flying a little bit. I see this sure. one here. I know about flying weight shift a little bit, so I know these are instructor bars. Talk to me a little bit about how you take somebody who says, well, all I've ever flown in my life is a three-axis airplane, and I've only flown on land. So sure. you've got a guy who knows about flying, knows yep. about stalls and the rest of that, but really doesn't know about this machine at all. How do you introduce them to it briefly? Sure. Well, in a weight shift control aircraft, it's really quite apparent what the controls are doing because we're directly holding the wing in our hands. So we can look at this wing, and if we want the nose to have a higher angle of attack, you just push the nose up. There it is at a higher AOA. And if you want your right wing tip to come down, your left wing tip to go up, you just grab it in your hands and physically pull that right wing tip down. Okay. You know, you, you think like about flying when you're a kid and you're pretending you're flying, you have your arms out like this and you want to turn right, you just bank into it like that. Well, now we've got that wing directly in our hands <laughs> and you just directly bank it the way you want and you directly pitch it. Sure, it, it takes an hour for people to get comfortable. I was just going to ask you that. Okay, so that same guy, land plane, yoke, gets in, goes with you a little bit. You, do you put him in the front right away or does he sit in the back right away? We'll take a student for half an hour in the back seat just so, so they can just experience get comfortable with it. He can watch. Yes, Not and then, an then we'll seat. put him in the front seat. Really in weight shift control, pitch takes care of itself. So you're not having to make those pitch moments. And the motions are quite small, are they not? They are. I mean, you're not, you just did it all the way out, and, and that would be like flaring to a landing. Or exactly. Or right? the, the only it, time. Show me, show me a typical motion in flight. You're flying sure. along, we're just goofing around on the shore. Yep. A typical motion in flight, first, first you're doing nothing in pitch. You just don't need to touch anything with that, it takes care of itself. So, a typical motion in flight, I'll have just a couple fingers on the bar right here, and. Uh, just your left and your inputs for left and right. So just All right, so I'm pretty impressed. Uh, you've done a lot of work on this thing since I flew it last. Uh, it was not the same vehicle then, and it was fun then, so I'm guessing it's even better now. But tell me about the whole line. What is This isn't your only product, I understand. No, we make this two-seater, and we make it in uh, three different engine configurations from 65 horsepower, 80, and 100 horsepower. We also make a single-seater, which is uh, all the concepts okay. work exactly the same. Everything's just smaller. Smaller engine, we use a 42 or 50 horsepower engine on that. Smaller wing, just for one person. That is ultralight legal. Does fall into the part 103. Can you make you can ultralight make that category? Okay. Yes. So and some is that is, amphib as well. That's amphibious. Wow. It's just like this, just smaller. Does everything that this does except carry a passenger. And for that one, you don't need a pilot certificate because it does fall under part 103. Which is one of the remarkable aspects of the FARs, I know. So, uh, okay, again, just because we did price before, give me ball, ballpark price on that single seater. Sure, here in 2015, it's 26000 for the uh, single seater. For an amphibious airplane, this is. And ready to fly. Ready to fly. And you don't need a pilot license, you don't need end numbers, you don't need a medical. License. That's right. You need to go have fun. That's there is right. a requirement. That's what it's about. Okay. That's
All right, so uh, some some excellent pricing. Uh, those are those are just wonderful numbers for people that want to get in aviation, think it's too expensive. You've got another answer for them. But how long has the product been around? Sure. So the prototypes for these started in 2002. 2002. So yep. 15 or 12 years ago, like that. And we've been just developing and refining ever since then. The uh, we made the first SLSA ones. We got SLSA approval in July of 2009. Okay. And uh, this is uh, serial number 100 that we're sitting in right now. Is it okay? Yeah. Uh, uh, the SLSA? Uh, no. Okay. Th that's including <laughs> all these ones yeah. which are experimental. Okay. Now this yes. had been. Now I knew it as a Canadian product once because the floats I think came from a man in Canada originally. Yes. But you're doing this in the United States. And that's all in the United States. Now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Including the floats, you're doing the floats as well? Correct. All right. Yep. Yeah, J.P. Kruger uh, was uh, making the floats and then we got working together in 2007. Um, I put it through the SLSA process, got that approved in 2009, and um, since then all of the SLSA ones have been made in Florida. Okay, well good for you. Uh, if I wanted one today, how long would it take me to get a two-seater? How long would it take to get a single-seater rough ballpark? Yes. Sure. Our current, it's January. Our current production is booked out through uh, May of this year. Good. Uh, so th that would be the next available delivery position would be May. Okay, excellent. Well, a lot of information. There's always more. I want to touch just briefly before we ask you for some uh, contact info. Uh, the concept of learning how to fly in one of these for that GA pilot that's still going, wow, it sounds really good, but I'm just uncomfortable about how I'm going to fly it. We talked earlier about how these are instructor bars and how after you put them in the back seat just to give them an intro, then you're going to put them in the front seat and say, well, let's go take a lesson. Sure. And I see back here, the camera probably can't see it, but I'm looking down at a switch box that has the mag switches here, so that uh, clearly this is made for an instructor to be back here. And with these and with pedals, yep. you could, now you might not fly it solo from the back seat, but you can completely operate it from the rear, right? When you've got two people on board. Correct. The, the so that, that guy that's up there goes, ah, I don't care, okay. you take it over for me because I'm not sure what I'm doing here. You can jump in and do all that, right? That's right. Flight instructor can do everything with the uh, aircraft to fly it from the back seat, okay. including kill the engine with these kill switches here. You can fly the wing as you need to and you've got a throttle. Uh, under your in the back seat. Also. Yeah, we got to touch on a throttle here because the throttle on a trike, you get your, your hands are occupied when you're taking off. So you've got a foot throttle. Now, sure. You got one in your car. It's so nothing unusual that way, but right. it's unusual for airplane pilots that are used to stuffing something in with their hand or moving it with their hand. But you've got actually both here, right? That's correct. Tell yes. me about it. Yeah. So yeah, like you said, Dan, the, um, the throttle is uh, under your right foot, just like it is in a car. And you've also got a hand throttle right here. If you want to set it for uh, for cruising and just lock it in position, you've got a hand throttle. Yeah. Do they right here does one override seat. the other, or how do they not conflict? Uh, they just work simultaneously. So if you have the cruise throttle set uh, at a certain level, but you want to go to full power then you can just press with your foot to get that additional power. And when you back off, it'll come back to where you've set the hand throttle? That's correct. It'll so kind of like a cruise control in a car? Yes, yes. You can always boost it some more, you let go, it comes back to the speed you set. Exactly like that cruise control. Beautiful. Yes. So the only thing you got to do when you come in for landing is make sure to pull that one back yes. and start operating with your foot again. Right, or else you won't land. <laughs> Darn, you keep on flying. Okay, fine. That we, uh, we've gotten so much information from you, but you know, people have a lot of questions. Where can we find out more on the web? Airtimeaircraft.com. Airtimeaircraft.com. Like Lots more about affordable aviation available on buydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Michael and I here at Seabring.